for being here this morning. I'm Dan Rivers. I'm the managing partner for Northwestern Mutual. And as a corporate partner to the NCAA and a significant sponsor of March Madness, our company once again was able to acquire the championship floor for the second consecutive year. The Northwestern Mutual family is passionate about college sports. In fact, one in six of our financial advisors were college athletes. We are also passionate about our community, especially when it comes to our company's national philanthropic focus, which is pediatric cancer. Immediately after the championship game, I approached the University of Louisville Athletic Department and Coach Patino about doing something significant with the championship floor. They were extremely excited and shared our vision for doing something to benefit this community. Collectively, we came up with a plan that I'm very excited to announce to you today. Behind me is a replica of the center of the championship court from Atlanta. The actual center court, which is substantially larger than this replica, is currently being framed and will be installed in the lobby here at the Yum Center. It will hang from the beams of this lobby behind me for every visitor to enjoy. Once framed and secured with metal plates, the centerpiece will measure 24 feet by 28 feet and weigh over 6,000 pounds. For a frame of reference, if you'll look to the KFC Yum Center logo to my left, the actual center court will be higher than from floor to glass. It will be an enormous piece of this lobby and will be fabulous for all to see. The balance of the floor will be turned into souvenir pieces and they will be on sale this fall with all proceeds going to benefit Cosair Children's Hospital. This year, three different sized pieces will be available for sale with some pieces for sale for under $100 so that every Cardinal fan can have the opportunity to own a piece of history. We will announce details on this sale in the coming weeks. Coach Patino has graciously agreed to sign a thousand pieces of those souvenir pieces of the floor to help make them more valuable and raise even more money for pediatric cancer. Coach may break a record this year for most signatures by a coach, but I guess that's the price of being a Hall of Famer and a national champion. Coach, we'd love for you to say a few words. Well, thank you. It's, it's an honor to, to sign uh, not only this uh, great piece of work, but it's so significant for us when you think about it, the glorious tradition of Louisville basketball. Uh, we've won three championships. Now I believe that ties us with Duke, and Rick is IU three as well, five. Um, so uh, I think Duke has three, but I'm, you know, it, when you win a championship throughout history and you have 26 years of a gap, a lot of our young fans don't remember the 80 and 86 championship and they got a chance for the first time for those 20 and 30 year olds to experience not only in person, but on television. And uh, a championship is quite unique, especially the pressure that these athletes are under today. So it's, uh, we're very excited about it. And to see the magnitude of that hanging, I'm just trying to imagine it uh, being held uh, by steel beams. It's, it's amazing. But the most important thing for us is supporting COSAIR and pediatric cancer. There's no better cause that we could support uh, than that. So we're very excited. I personally am excited to do whatever we can uh, to raise money uh, for that cause. It's just so exciting. And uh, I know a lot of children will benefit by this. So we uh, are excited to be part of your team. Uh, Dan is a big supporter of Louisville basketball and a big supporter of basketball in this state. And you know, it's, it's kind of unusual to see back-to-back -back championships yet in this state. It doesn't happen throughout history very often. And um, we're looking to one of us to try and make it three in a row. And um, 
it would be even more exciting if it was Louisville rather than Kentucky. <laughs> but we'll see uh, how it plays out. Uh, so we're very excited to be part of, of this whole thing. It's, it's been a wonderful ride, and um, we want to continue. And we can't thank you enough for the support you give our community. Uh, one out of every six uh, are athletes. Uh, we hope to make one out of every five maybe basketball players <laughs> down the road. <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for, for allowing us to be part of this. And uh, it's going to be an exciting few months. And uh, we're looking forward to getting started. Only 1,000 signatures, that's easy. <laughs> you know, this particular group of cardinals were very special. They embodied courage, character, and commitment on and off the court. They truly rose to the occasion. You know, but another place that you can see courage, character, and commitment on display every single day is on the seventh floor of Cosair Children's Hospital. There you will find some very brave children who are literally in the fight for their lives. You will also find families struggling to deal with the residual effects of pediatric cancer. The money raised from this floor will stay right here in our community, but will benefit the entire region. Specifically, proceeds will further the research being done by Dr. Ken Lucas and his team. Dr. Lucas, to my left, is the head of pediatric, pediatric oncology and hematology at both Cosair Children's Hospital and the University of Louisville Department of Pediatrics. Thank you, Dr. Lucas, for all the work that's being done by your team. One goal of this project is that our local and national media partners will help us draw attention to the need for additional funding for pediatric cancer causes. You know, we're very fortunate to have a great children's hospital here in Louisville where so much progress is being made. At this time, I'd like to invite Tom Kometz, president of COSER Children's Hospital, to say a few words. Well, good morning, and thank you, Dan, so much. Um, it is quite fitting that uh, we gather today to uh, celebrate and honor a couple of things. We're honoring Dr. Lucas and the important research that he's doing at Coastal Children's Hospital and the University of Louisville. We're honoring the kids at Coastal Children's Hospital that um, struggle, 650 kids currently in some level of treatment either in the hospital or in Dr. Lucas's clinics. Um, we're honoring a basketball team that brought us a national championship and we can't forget that. And certainly we're honoring Northwestern Mutual for making new resources available to Coastal Children's Hospital to continue to do good work. I'm gonna read uh, just a portion uh, of a letter for you um, from a 12-year-old child that uh, uh, is in the midst of battling cancer. He says, on November 17th, 2011, Salvatore Bertoloni met me on 7 West, the Addison Joe Blair Cancer Care Center at Coastal Children's Hospital and told me the most devastating news of my life, that I had been diagnosed with ALL, acute leukemia. I'd never heard of it before that day, and I've never been in the hospital other than when I was born. Over the past year, I've spent more than 30 days with the nurses and doctors who continue to take care of me, and many other kids that have been diagnosed with cancer. Today, I feel lucky. This is from a 12-year-old boy. I feel lucky. I know some kids who continue to fight every day and may or may not grow up. I have less than two years of chemotherapy left. I take oral chemo every day, IV chemo at least once a month, and get three drugs in my spine every three months because that is what it takes to kill my cancer. I could have gone anywhere, but my parents chose Coastal Children's Hospital and Dr. Bertoloni for me because they thought I would get the best care there. It is for kids like me, kids with cancer. Your support of the Coastal Children's Hospital Foundation now and in the future will help ensure that kids like me continue to receive the best care available. Now isn't that pretty impressive from a 12-year-old? 
That is the kind of work that we're doing day in and day out for 650 kids that are suffering from a childhood cancer. A couple of introdu introductions I'd like to make. Um, Leslie Smart, where's Leslie? She and Lenny Meyer have done a great job of shepherding and stewarding this, this uh, relationship with Northwestern. So for that, we're certainly thankful, Leslie. Uh, Dr. Jerry Rabla is chair of the Department of Pediatrics and chief of staff at uh, Coast Air Children's Hospital. His association with the University of Louisville, he is, as an individual, probably more so than anybody else, responsible for bringing people to Louisville doctor, like Dr. Lucas. So Dr. Rabla, thank you for that. Um, we touched a little bit on Dr. Lucas. Uh, he joined us from, from Penn State, and, and he's brought this phase one clinical trial to our community that, that heretofore we've not had the benefit of, of being able to participate in. And his particular research interest is in vaccines that help prevent the recurrence of cancers. This is cutting edge technology, cutting edge research. There's only a handful of centers in the country that are participating in this. And it's research like this that is going to allow us to save more lives in the future. So, Dr. Lucas, thank you again for your many commitments. So, as we celebrate today, let me say a, a few thanks to Dan Rivers. Certainly, thank you for your commitment and that of Northwestern to supporting us in this endeavor. Um, to Coach Patino and your national championship team, um, it, it, this floor wouldn't be as valuable in Louisville without your very good work. And, and then certainly to the caregivers back at Coastal Children's Hospital. Um, they're doing very good work, very tough work, day in and day out. And we shouldn't forget that they recognize, probably more than any of us, the benefits that these dollars will make. Um, Coach Patino often says that we have fantastic fans here at Louisville. I have no doubt that these fans will snap up these pieces of floor. They're going to honor their team. They're going to honor the memory of this national championship. And with that, they'll honor the kids at Coastal Children's Hospital. Thanks for letting me be part today. If you're wondering what some of the pieces of this floor will look like that will be on sale in the fall, Coach, if you'll uh, help me. thousand pieces that look just like this will be signed by Coach Patino and will be available at that sale in October, again with all proceeds going to benefit Coast Air Children's Hospital. There will be numerous other sizes, as I mentioned earlier, available at lower price points so that, again, everyone can have an opportunity to own a piece of history. So with that, Coach has agreed to take a few questions, as will Tom and myself. Do you have any questions? Those are 18 inches by 12 inches, uh, approximately $500. You know, you ask me that every year. <laughs> well, here's my answer. It costs the same, approximately the same thing it cost last year. How about that? <laughs> Our goal is $250,000 that, that if we're successful, we'll be able to make a donation to Coastair Children's Hospital for somewhere north of $250,000. A lot of that depends on whether Coach's hand gets tired when he's halfway through those thousand pieces, though. Well, I signed 850 bottles in an hour and a half. And um, the O in my name started cramping. <laughs> so I'm excited to be part of this. And, and certainly, you know, just, just listening to that letter um, makes it even more rewarding to understand the, the great work that the doctors are doing. And, and to give any relief to these children is just an awesome thing for us to be part of. Any other questions? Luke and Montrez, we're very proud of Montrez. 
being part of the gold medal, and, and certainly uh, we watched Luke yesterday on a tape delay, and um, he texted me, he said the team that they, the competition now gets really stiff, and um, they're looking forward to that. Certainly, uh, we're very excited about the guys that are practicing right now. We had a practice yesterday, and a, we'll have a practice today, and they're all doing great. So it's exciting for them to be part of those uh, foreign trips, as well as the local guys getting a lot out of it as well. Russ is, I'm sorry. Did he hurt his shoulder? I didn't know that. You mean before he fell off the moped? Is that what you're talking about? Um, he's, uh, he's fine. <laughs> you probably know more about these injuries than me, but <laughs> Russ is fine. He's, basically, he's a faker anyway, so we don't pay too much attention to it. <laughs> Anybody else? Kevin Ware's doing okay. He's not doing a whole lot, just riding the bike, and you can almost see it uh, from the x-rays, the bone healing. I, I would venture to say that in another month, he'll be healed, and then he'll start working out a little bit. Uh, probably sometime in October, he'll start playing again. So he's doing well. Well, I was sweating out. I, I, I sort of knew that G where Gorky was going to get drafted. Um, he was probably one spot earlier than I expected. I expected Brooklyn to take him, and he, was, he went one spot earlier. Uh, Peyton, we sort of sweated out a little bit going into it, but uh, I think Peyton's got an outstanding chance of making the Detroit Pistons. He's actually playing great basketball right now. Uh, and get a chance to watch him today at 1 o'clock versus Kyle Keurig who uh, had a nice dunk uh, in yesterday's game uh, as he missed a layup and the ball came out. But it didn't mean anything, so it was not bad. So we're looking forward to uh, seeing Peyton versus Kyle at 1 o'clock today as well. You know, I enjoy watching, watching the games. Uh, you know, I don't like blowouts as much as, as competitive games, but Montrez uh, really had a good week. I spoke to Billy Donovan, and he really had a good week, a good couple of weeks. And uh, he'll be at practice today as well. So he's, he, he's flown home and uh, going to practice with our guys today. You know, I, I, I don't think, when, when you have blowouts, I ask them about practices, they're short. Not until you get really good competition will it be meaningful to him. I would say our practices are probably more beneficial than that because, uh, until competition sets in. You know, when you beat a team by 70 points, you're not getting a whole lot out of it. But it, It's almost like a, you know, a summer league game. But when, when you get the, into the competition, of the medal rounds, like Montrez had, then, then it'll get very competitive for him, and I think it'll be uh, much more rewarding for him. That's right now none of my business. It costs $2 million if you want to know. So you can quote me on that. Well, I know Dan real well, and, and, and certainly he plays a role in this because he's a supporter, certainly. And, uh, you know, then when I found out it was the cause behind it, I got very excited about it. Uh, you know, it's, I, I know it seems like a lot of pieces to sign, but it, it's really not. Uh, I would sign 2,000, 3,000 if need be uh, for this cause. <laughs> but I don't want to sign 3,000 bottles, but I would, I'm more than happy to sign. So I, I'm just excited to be part of it because it's, it's again, uh, the whole package of 
of seeing something of that magnitude being hung here, this, uh, the ri original piece, will be here on display for fans to take pictures of when they come to games. Is that right, Kenny? And so that's also exciting. And then obviously raising that type of money is great. Um, you know, and there's no better cause than to see children helped. So it, it's, it's, it's great to be part of, and, and obviously we're a small part of it, but very excited to uh, share in this experience. What exposure do I have with the team? I'm coaching them. Yeah, we're allowed eight hours per week, two hours of basketball. We have separated them into four half-hour individual sessions. We have done, like right now, we're doing two one-hour sessions. Next week, we'll do a two-hour practice leading up to it. And we're a veteran team, so we're trying to put in a lot of our plays and, and defenses. And uh, I'll tell you right now, this is a very, very strong backcourt. You know, um, Chris Jones is everything that uh, we've heard. Uh, He's been very, very good in practice. Rogier and Gill have been outstanding. Um, so the practices have been very competitive. Uh, Van Trees looks great. The mango looks good. But, but the backcourt is very, very strong. That's, that's obviously something that, that's as strong as, you know, when you lose a Peyton Siva, you not only lose a great player, but you lose a great attitude. Now, I don't know if we can replace that attitude of Gorky Zhang and, and Peyton Siva, but I think we can replace the abilities of, of those athletes. Probably the biggest challenge is to remember what league we're in. <laughs> Once we get that, we'll be okay. But, but the league will be very competitive because it's, you know, you're going to play Cincinnati twice, Memphis twice, Connecticut twice, Temple, and they're all going to be ranked. So, and then there's the unknown of some of the other teams because we haven't faced them, uh, teams like SMU and Houston. So it'll be interesting to see how how good they'll be as well. You know, you know, a Larry Brown team will be not only talented but well coached. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what the other teams have in store for us. And we, we have a very good non-conference schedule. Um, you know, you, some of the teams we haven't announced, but you know we're playing Kentucky and North Carolina. And, and uh, certainly teams like that will be very competitive as well. Well, we'll be humble again. I, I want them to celebrate. You know, when, again, we celebrate with our, with our fans in our city because, like I said, you know, a lot of people weren't born and, and didn't celebrate, didn't remember. All they hear the stories about Griff and all those guys winning championships, but they, they weren't around. Even, you know, if, you, if you're 35, you don't quite remember it as well. So this uh, championship, the great thing about uh, being part of the, of the University of Louisville, it's not only celebrated by our team, our athletic department, our university, but it's celebrated by all our fans. And uh, no matter where we go, uh, people are very, very excited. And the game itself, you know, a lot of championship games don't come out great. They're, they're blowouts or they're boring games. They, they, they're anticlimactic to, to the semifinal. This was a great college basketball game. And, you know, you think all the drama with our basketball team, starting with the Kevin Ware injury, starting with all the number ones being knocked out, except us, and, and then having to overcome um, the injury. And what people probably forget more than anything else is what a great game we played against Duke because of that injury. You know, and, and then moving on, it, a walk-on. You know, I had an interesting conversation with David Novak. Some of you may not realize this, but David and I are very close friends from, from Young Brands, and he recommended that I take a look at his nephew. His nephew is Tim Henderson. And then at the, we were playing golf, and he said, you know, Rick, if, 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 I know you're going to be really strong this year, but if, if Tim Henderson uh, is not good enough to, to compete, you know, you, you've got to do what you have to do. And I said, well, David, he's a big part of our basketball team. So you don't have to worry about Tim being cut from our team if that's what you're alluding to. 
And he said, oh, I, I didn't realize that. I said, no, he's a gigantic part of our basketball team. And uh, I played golf with him once again this year. And I said, you know, David, that conversation you had before the season, just think back. If it wasn't for your nephew, we all don't celebrate a national championship and beat Wichita State. We were toast. The game was over. He doesn't make those two threes. And the amazing thing about it is that he would have the, the um, courage to take those two threes. You know, the first one I yelled, kill it, Tim. And the second one I was praying. So, uh, you know, we don't get to that championship game and we don't celebrate all of this if it wasn't for a walk-on. And how it all came about was quite interesting. I think the brand changed three, four years ago when we went Louisville first. And we really meant that. And, and you know, I gave the guys a speech about the book I was writing, One Day Contract, and I told them I wanted you to play as if you had a one-day contract this year. And Gorky always says that, that, you know, in his pro interviews, all the general managers would tell me that he would say that he played this year with a one-day contract. And um, I said, well, Gorky, you're lucky that you're not signing a one-day contract. Uh, but they, they did play that way. We, we made an agreement that we were going to play in practice as if our contract would be renewed on how we played that practice and that next game. And I think that played a large role in, in, in the way our guys carried themselves this year, even with, the, even with the losses. But the comebacks were amazing, you know, starting with the Syracuse game in the Big East final, down 18, to the Wichita game, to the Michigan game. Um, they were quite resilient and showed a lot of fortitude, this team. You know, I honestly have not given any thought to it whatsoever. Um, and I'm sure I will as it gets closer. I'm too busy celebrating. There's nobody who celebrates better than my children, my wife, and myself. We've been celebrating. <laughs> uh, not one moment, no, uh, but I guess when you travel around and um, just so many people just speak about it and what a great game it was. You know, they all always, they always say, congratulations, but what a great game that was. You know, and um, that, that's been a lot of fun. Um, you know, I, as you, some of you know, I went to backstage with Pitbull for 40 minutes with my son, and that was uh, a lot of laughs and a lot of fun. The whole concert was great. We had a blast. So we're doing a lot of exciting things as a family uh, together. Uh, you know, so it, we've had a blast, and we will continue to have a lot of fun while we're working on recruiting, and because recruiting starts this uh, tomorrow, I leave. We're not allowed to say, yeah, you find out a week in advance. We know, but we're not allowed to tell you. <laughs> well, we need two big guys right now. We, we, we're we, like I said, we're, we, we've got a lot of talented ball players right now, and we want to stay so we don't have to rebuild. And today, when you look at it with professional basketball and players leaving early, you've got really, to really play musical chairs the right way so you don't have to rebuild and lose too many players. We're not, our system is not good for rebuilding. You know, it's too complex. So we've got to really... Make sure we're very strong in the backcourt. You can overcome weakness in the front court, but you can't overcome weakness in the backcourt to maintain the level that you want to maintain. You've got to be strong in the backcourt. And you saw that with the obviously games of Russ getting us to the Final Four and then Peyton and Luke. You know, certainly Gorgi was very good. Certainly Van Trees played well in, in, in the role that he played. Um, certainly Shane was terrific in that final game. But the backcourt is what got us there. Well, Russ is, as a leader is a scary thought. <laughs> but he's doing a very good job. You know, Russ makes sure that guys have a lot of fun. Russ is very competitive. Watching Russ and Chris Jones go at it is something to, to really behold. I mean, those two guys going after each other I put them on opposite teams, 
uh, just to make Russ better, make Chris better, and and uh, and then and then you look at Rozier and you look at Gill and and uh, even Tim Henderson. They get after it very very hard. And then now Montrez comes back, it brings the it brings the level of play up uh, in the front court tremendously because he's so. If you let down for one second, he'll. These guys go for blood in practice, which is which is fun to see. I'm not going to the ESPYS. Um, I'm up for an award. Kenny tells me, probably won't win it. But if we do win it, Russ's speech, he's going to accept it, and he's going to get up there, and I'll tell you what he's going to say because he was going to say, um, I accept this award for Coach Patino because if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't get this award. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Backstage with pit bull and a tattoo. I would say our coach has mellowed, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Any other questions? We will have this replica on display in multiple locations around town. There will be an opportunity for fans to have their picture taken with this replica uh, as well at the tip-off luncheon later in the fall. So you'll see this showing up around town. And uh, just a couple of other comments. Uh, the cost of the floor, the cost of the floor will not be deducted from the proceeds from this sale. Northwestern Mutual is covering all the cost of purchasing this floor, just so you know. And uh, the last comment I would say is Tom Jurich often gets credited with being the best athletic director in the country, and I think that's pretty clear. He's put together a, a wonderful program, but this is a very deep athletic department, so I want to say thank you to Kenny Klein and Kevin Miller. Uh, these guys have been great partners. A lot of the ideas that we came up with this year were as a result of the partnership with those two guys specifically. And also a little shout out to Dennis Petrullo. I don't know if he's still here, and his team from here at the Yum Center, they actually came up with the idea of hanging it up from the rafters. So they're very proud of this wonderful uh, center, and it's going to get even better here in the next couple of months. So with that, thank you all for coming. Thank you for all that you do. And help us get the word out about what we're doing and specifically the need to fight pediatric cancer. Have a great afternoon. <laughs>